I'm, I'm going to ask Tim about this. It seems particularly what, large. What is it time? And he's just, he seems, yeah. to, he, we get and Tim, he seems particularly, there he goes. And he's particularly immersed in hey, it. Hey, Tim. Tim, 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 Tim at, what point, at what point in time does a coach have to say, hey, I need to be, I need to at least say hi to my team and, and assistance <laughs> and not be all, he, he, had this, he has that Willy Wonka thing. You come in, Stefanski is like, are you good? He's like, I've been here doing my plays. <laughs> I said good day, sir. We t- can we go over some special teams? Cause no, you you took my god spot stoppers, Tim. When wh- is he gonna give out the play calling, or when should it be uh, uh, something that you say uh, it- it's time to- for you to be a CEO and not so micro um, micro managing on-, on the offense? He ain't micro managing. He ain't macro managing. <laughs> yeah, you know, I would say it's probably time right now. I don't know if he's going to do it, though. I mean, he is, uh, this offense is his baby. You know, and he, he, you know, like you guys said, he's got that play sheet. He's holding on to that thing like a security blanket. <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't see him giving up any play calling duties anytime I'd like soon. to get a hold of that he, and he have a ceremonial the, burning Tim, of the Tim, play he sheet. on to the play sheet like Auburn holding on to Bo Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> it's so maddening. And, Tim, I know all, all, all coaches have them. But I've, I, I can't remember a cutaway this year of Kevin Stefanski that I didn't see the play sheet. It was just front and center True. all season long. It drove me nuts. Yeah, every time, Jay, like you said, same exact look, same exact expression on his face. You know, no matter what was going on throughout the game, whether we're winning, we're losing, we just turned the ball over. Whatever it was, it's, it's the play sheet. That's right. Yeah. right. So all the answers are on the play sheet, I guess. Right? Tim, Tim, would that drive you crazy? I mean, as a player, and it, like, does it – but if you take Stefanski's play calling away, what's the point of keeping him? He's the head right, coach. Exactly. But is that's he the is. head that's coach? I don't know. Yeah. Is he the yeah, right I mean, coach? I, you know, I think I think he gets one more year, a full year with Deshaun. You know, I think you know the guy took him to the playoffs a couple years ago. Obviously, the last two years have been down years, losing seasons. But you know, you bring in a guy like Deshaun Watson, you pay him all this money. And you bring him in to pair him with Stefanski. So you want to see what they can do with a full season together and, and this offense, see if they can make it go. And then, you know, we'll know a lot more about what's going on and how that how this is going to work after next season. Hey, Tim, that that's that. <laughs> you, you from Kentucky. Hold on. Y'all done run more people out of Kentucky coaching than anybody I can think of. Yeah, but uh, one of them's coming home. One like, of them's I'm leaving like, an NFL Kentucky, job to go back to Kentucky. Kentucky, Kentucky people don't play. they like, you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll get rid of it pretty quick around here. Right. <laughs> Tim, Tim, what's going what's going on with Deshaun Watson? Yeah. I, I'm Ooh. a little I'm a little Ooh. concerned. I'm a little concerned. From a, a quarterback standpoint, what, what you see? You know, I think the same thing you guys are. You know, I, I really didn't expect a whole lot from him coming into this season because of the two years off and playing in a new system. But, you know, he just has kind of looked so inconsistent. It's really kind of disappointing. You know, he's, he's been such a great player uh, the first few years of his career in Houston. But this year, it's just, you know, you see a few flashes here and there throughout games. Like, oh, that looks like Deshaun Watson that I'm used to seeing. And then it's, you know, just inconsistent. Um, uh, accuracy is very inconsistent. Decision making, he's holding on to the ball way too long, yeah. in my opinion. You know, when Jacoby was in there, Jacoby was getting rid of the football mm-hmm. really quickly. And he was getting to the right spot. Uh, but Deshaun is he's just not trusting what he's seeing. You know, he's holding on to the ball in the pocket uh, way too long, uh, trying to let things develop. And, um, you know, it's just it's just not clicking right now. You know? So hopefully with a full offseason, uh, you know, a full preseason games, a, a schedule he can play in and, can, and then getting started week one. Hopefully he can, you know, get this thing going to where he looks like the old Deshaun Watson. If not, man, this thing is going to go bad real quick because, you know, you pay a guy 200 30 million or whatever it was, you know, you expect him to come in and be one of the better quarterbacks in the league. You know, you're expecting the top three or four quarterback in, in the entire league. And right now, we certainly haven't seen that. Hey, Tim, do you, here's a question. I just thought about when you said that. You think, all right, we knew he was going to be rusty. We, well, we did not we did not know it was going to be this much rust. But we knew he, there was a chance to be rusty. The one thing that we think, we're talking about all physical attributes here, right? What about the psychological attributes of going through that? Yeah. Could he be damaged think, from that, right? Absolutely. I think that's a great point, Brad. You know, I think, you know, we don't talk about that enough. You know, this guy, he's he's always been used to being talked about how great he is, how great of a player he is. And all of a sudden, your name is drugged through the mud, and they're talking about what an awful person you are. Every stadium he goes in, he gets booed unmercifully. Uh, you know, people are just, they can't they can't stand him. You know, anytime he goes on the road, I can't imagine what those fans are saying to him when he's coming, you know, out of the tunnels and on the sidelines and things like that. I'm sure he just gets harassed. 
nonstop by you know the, by the opposing team's fans. So certainly that will take a toll on you mentally. Um, you know, I don't know how he gets through that. You know, hopefully he's he's got some type of yeah. Um, you know, counseling going on where he's seeing somebody and talking through things because that, that will beat you down mentally. Um, absolutely. And that's, uh, you know, that's something he's going to have to deal with the rest of his career. You know, to that point, we've talked about Carson Wentz last yeah. week. Carson Wentz was a guy very much like Deshaun Watson who was poised on that doorstep of, of his next step in his evolution, you thought, was going to be an NFL MVP. And Carson mm-hmm. Wentz was right there. I think you can make a case Deshaun Watson was very close to making that move. And since we've seen Carson Wentz come completely unglued, he's failed yeah. in two cities post Philadelphia. And a lot of people are now wondering, is his career over? And that's the cautionary tale of what can happen to a quarterback when this muscle gets screwed up. And Brad, to yeah. your point and Tim, yours, I don't know how you figure out if that's the problem, but if it is, can it be fixed? Did you ever get into ruts mentally that like a yeah. golfer with the yips you were able to work out of? Absolutely. I think it's a great point, Jay. You know, the, the uh, great example with Carson Wentz there. You know, I certainly went through that as a player myself. You know, I was obviously taking a physical beating when I was with, the, you know, that expansion team Browns getting sacked a lot, getting hit a lot. But it took a toll on me mentally more than it did physically because, you know, at the high school level, you know, I was used to having nothing but success. You know, I was the national player of the year in high school. I was a first team All-American in college, SEC player of the year, number one pick in the draft. I had never really dealt with failure. And, you know, so I just thought I would go into the NFL and pick up right where I'd, you know, been at every other level I played in. And when that's not happening for you, it beats you to death mentally. You know, the fans, you know, they have expectations from you. The, the, your own teammates have expectations. Obviously, you, you're no one picking the draft. They're paying you a lot of money. And you start really questioning yourself. You know, am, can I play at this level? You know, can I do this? Why, why am I not having the success that I'm used to having? And that, that's a hard thing to work through. And, you know, really the only way to get through that, I think, is to uh, – you know, you, you just you just you just grind. You know, you start believing in you. You just have to have that ultimate belief in yourself that no matter what everybody on the outside is saying, that they're not going to get into you, uh, to, into your mind and, and break you down mentally. You just have to work through it. And it's way easier said than done. But uh, you know, cer- certainly I, I know exactly what that feels like. I think it's a little different than Wentz because Wentz was so so as a rookie, and then his second year he was great, and then he got hurt, and that was it. Whereas Watson was excellent for the four years he was in the league. Well, that half yeah. a season and three years. <laughs> but to both your points, you're right. If there is, if it's a mental thing, which it seems like it is with Carson Wentz, right? He he seems mm-hmm. mentally shattered. If that is the case with Watson, even if he was much better than Wentz beforehand, you, you just never know how a guy's going to react going forward. That's that's the one thing that I certainly really didn't think about with him when the Browns made this trade. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna make sure that that not make sure, but I'm gonna emphasize that the Browns, as much as you put on the physical rehab yeah, let's, let's to, work on the mind you got to work on the, phys, uh, the yeah. psychological rehab that needs to occur and, and, and he, he trust and believe me Sean Watson not gonna be able to do this by himself no, no but but we have said many times before Tim you've heard this a million times it's a make or break season next year is the biggest make or break season that the Browns have had in forever for their coach and for their quarterback because if 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 the they've coach, never been this all in. Right. Because if the coach sucks, he's fired. And if Watson's not good next year, the Browns are completely screwed for the next five years. I feel I feel he got to get back to, you know, when you go through allegations and when you go through things like that, people tend to strip away what makes you a, a great athlete. Mm-hmm. A great athlete is saying that I'm better than everybody. You're confident. Yeah. I'm cocky. Yeah. I'm arrogant. Right. You, you can't touch what I'm talking about out here. I see him in a press conference. He'd be looking for nice words to say. To your well, point, G, to your point. Did you guys hear what Joe Burrow said after the game yesterday? Yeah, and I loved it. Joe Burrow said, he, they were talking about how, how big is the Bengals' window. Remember we've talked about this window before? He and goes, as long as, as long as I'm playing. As long as I'm playing. Like, we need Watson to be talking like that. He, He's got to get back yeah. to that. If he can get back there, but it, it, there is a psychological but, but component see, with that. See, you just said that. See, that talks about your confidence level. Yeah. Because when you look at like trash, you ain't going to no point no. talking yeah, about that's right. as long as I'm You know, here. I sure. thought Deshaun, just his body language, he looks like a beaten down man. Yeah. When he's standing at the podium, he doesn't stand there tall and proud. He just, and why would he right now? He's 3-3 three and three and the Browns finish 7-10. But to me, with look, the volume down, just looking at him, if I was asked to characterize his mental state, I would say not very good. Yeah. He looks like Doesn't he's been run confident. over by a truck. It looked yeah. look like he's always on, on, uh, a 
aware or thinking that somebody's coming for him. You see what I'm saying? So you're right. always on the defensive. Right. 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 Tim, and do you get it back in in a sports psychologist's office, or does that only come back on the field between the lines when you start having more oh. success? Yeah, well, I think it does start in a sports psychologist's office. You know, I think you have to find those tools to be able to to block, uh, block out the noise and, and find that belief in yourself that you once had. So I think it starts there, and then you take it out on the field. And certainly Deshaun's going to have to start having some success, you know, to, to feel like himself again. He's going to have to go out and start having those 350-yard, four-touchdown performances right, that we right. saw him having. You're right, Tim. All the year to, to feel like that's who he is again, you know, because right now – uh, he's got a bad taste in his mouth going into this offseason. Hopefully, you know, that's going to motivate him to work even harder. You know, like you guys mentioned, just get in there with, with Stefanski and learn this offense as well as he possibly can and, uh, you know, try to take this thing to another level because if he gets off to a really bad start next year and after the first four or five games, he's struggling like he did after uh, what we saw, like he did, like we, like we saw him struggle this season, that confidence is going to tank really quickly. So, so I hopefully, you know, for Deshaun, he finds a way to cope with all that and he can get back to being the player that we <laughs> Well, this is a marriage, Tim. I, it's incumbent upon the Browns as well to get out in the ethos and find somebody that could be a help. Mm -hmm. And they may not be here in Cleveland. The Browns, they have to marry the two together. Well, they because, have a, a but, team's sports psychologist. No, but I'm saying he, that person may not be the person. Oh, I see. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? This situation and, might be so I mean, dire. This thing is, that... I mean, because he looks like a shell of himself. Right. You see a piece, a glimpse of him. And then you see some of that in the guy I saw, like that pass he made yesterday. I'm like, there's three people standing here. You, there's no way you thought you could thread that through there. Right? I'm like, but yeah. if you're all screwed up, you know, well, it's like your free throw. If you're all screwed up, try, somebody better unscrew it. When you try, Tim, you know this, you know, when you're trying to make plays, like it seems like he feel like if I throw this one pass, it's going to eliminate everything. Right. Like yep. you can't, you can't eliminate talk with one pass. No. It got to be consistent. Body, body of work. It's like trying to hit a six-run home run. You're right. exactly you know, right. Like, yeah, he's, he's trying. Right. Every yeah. play, he's trying to justify the contract. Yeah. Trying to justify, you know, all the time he missed. Trying to show he's a great player. You can't make it up in one play. No, it's it's slow and steady wins the yeah. race on that. Great point. Tim, did they get Joe Woods right, letting him go. Yeah, I think so. You know, you guys have hit it perfectly. You know, I think it's just uh, just too much inconsistency. You know, the way they started out the season, they lost a lot of games because of that defense that they probably would have had an opportunity to make a playoff run this year had the defense been a little better. And it, and it was simple things. You know, we're talking about fundamentals of defense. We're talking about communication on the back end. We're talking about pursuit angles and tackling, you know, just basic fundamentals of football that this team was not doing early on. Now, certainly they improved over the last, you know, six, seven games of the year. Uh, they, they got better, uh, but I think, you know, the writing was already on the wall uh, for, for Joe, and I think, it, I think it probably was time to move on and, and uh, get somebody else in here, a new uh, kind, of, kind of a new life into this defense because they're, they're a really talented defense. Obviously, they need some pieces, uh, you know, on that defensive line to add there to, you know, help against uh, the run game, uh, but there's some really talented players that you can do a lot of things with on that defense, so hopefully they get the right guy uh, for these players. Kevin Stefanski in a statement said that uh, he thanked Joe for his hard work and his dedication. He certainly wishes him the best, um, but clearly it was time to move on. A couple of numbers here that jumped out at me. The Browns defense against the pass was ranked fifth in the NFL yeah. this year. Now, on one hand, you're like, well, okay, that's pretty impressive. Well, on the other hand, they were 25th against the run, and there were a right. lot of games where teams Just may right. have wanted to throw the ball more, but they quickly decided Atlanta – why would we throw it well, we when it, our quarterbacks right. throw into the wrong jerseys and we've got fourth string running backs gashing this defense? Not so, to mention, Jay, the Browns didn't face that much of a no, two of quarterbacks. They this year. really, they really did yeah. not. When you look back at the teams that they had a chance to to beat to get into the playoffs and failed, it's it's quite an indictment. We're going to later. Do you want the Tim, list real quick, guys? Do you uh, want the list of quarterbacks they beat and lost to? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if you got it. Yeah, I got it right here. They beat this year. You ready? Yep. Baker Mayfield, Mitch Trubisky, Joe Burrow, Tom Al uh, Tom Brady, Kyle Allen, Tyler Huntley, and Carson Wentz. To be two good quarterbacks, Burrow and Brady. And they lost to Joe Flacco, Marcus Mariota, Justin Herbert, Bailey Zappi, Lamar Jackson, Tua Tagovailoa, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Andy Dalton, and Kenny Pickett. So they played. That's if, a mixed bag. If I yeah. include Tua, they played seven good quarterbacks in seventeen games. Yeah, and that sh uh, should be a recipe for making the playoffs. Yes. Uh, Tim, later in the program, we're going to play a, a game called One Name Blame Game. Here's the way it works. Obviously, there's enough blame to be spread all around. And it's a team sport. You win as a team, you lose as a team. But 
in the one name blame game, you have to just name one guy most responsible for what we saw on the field this year. Who's your name? Uh, man, I guess you got to go with Stefanski. Um, you know, I mean, he's in charge of this deal. So you know, I, think, I, think you, I think you start there and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to point the finger anywhere else. So, you know, it always starts at the leadership at the top. So I'd have to go there. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a strong answer. Yeah. And I, I'm sure that there will be others that name Kevin Stefanski in the one yeah. name blame game before we let you go. And first of all, I want to thank you. What, what an enormous help you have been to the ultimate Cleveland sports show during this season, Brown season. Yeah. We needed that, that voice of, of reason, that voice exactly. of expert at the quarterback position. Exactly. Um, we were blessed to have you throughout the year on our inaugural season, and you're a big part of this thing, uh, the reason this thing has been so successful. We're going to use you, obviously, during football season uh, as it comes forward, but also periodically as, as uh, news and developments warrant, we'll also bring you back. But before we let you go, McN- McNuggets has something that he is dying to ask you about. <laughs> and, and I'm, I, and I, quite frankly, I can't wait to get your answer. Oh, I know what this is. Yeah, yeah Tim. So we, <laughs> we have, we actually, we're going to break a record for most viewers in a single show today. So we thank are. you to everyone out there yeah. for watching. And Tim, as of this moment right now, you're officially a brand ambassador for Built Bars because you know <laughs> that protein intake is important <laughs> to gain muscle. <laughs> and with 15 grams of protein in every Built Bar, yeah. you eat a couple of those yeah. a day, you're going to be absolutely jacked. Use what would you look code, like if you had a couple of days? 15 for 15% off. If I ate 20 Built Bars a day, I might look like this, Steve. Take tag board. <laughs> if y'all haven't seen it, <laughs> this is a Photoshop picture of Tim after 38 Built Bars a day for 46 years. Tim. But I think, Tim, I think you actually corrected. You're only 45. Didn't Matt Jones get this wrong? Yeah, he got it wrong. I'm only 45, man. He's got yeah, how 30 dare you? Wrong. Tim, I, yeah. most people want an 8-pack. Tim's got a 16-pack. Uh, Tim, I, what, <laughs> what, 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 you're killing me here. I mean, that's crazy. What in the – how much time – a day do you spend in the gym to look like that? You know, it's a couple hours a day, but I've been doing this for 20 some years. You know I mean? I haven't missed a workout since, you know, since I was in college, you know, I still oh, do the same stuff I used to do. And the only difference is now my body really than it was when I was playing is I eat better. You know, when I was playing, I really didn't focus on diet. I was eating Hooters, chicken wings, and drinking beer every damn day. <laughs> you know, uh, well, how much, was, how much oil did you put on yourself, son? Out a lot. Now I just <laughs> dial in the diet and cardio. Kind of got things figured out. Hey, hey, Tim, how much oil did you put on yourself, son? Hey, that's you, hard sweat right there. Yeah. Hey, you know, you know what happened? I was actually I was in my sauna. So the, I posted that was on my story. So right before that, I posted a picture. I was in my sauna, and it was 200 degrees in there. And I was just sweated out. So when I came out of the sauna, that's when I took the picture. Uh, so that's well, why I looked oiled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever you're doing, keep doing it, son. He's in better shape glow. than what he played. I, if he walked into the Browns locker room right now, cool. everybody but Miles Garrett would look at him and say, who in the hell is this? <laughs> it's okay. I got something for you, Tim. I'm going to call Barry Bonds up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, t- hey, Tim, before you, Tim, before you go real quick, here's Can a question. Can you still fit your old uh, football helmet? Oh, yeah. Before you go real quick, right. here's a question. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, Tim, you know you know the Browns locker room. Yeah. And you know that we are now looking for a defensive coordinator. Now, sometimes you see defensive coordinators have huge personalities out here. Buddy Ryan, people of that, like that type Greg of person. Greg Williams. Right. Yeah. yeah. Could that person coexist with Stefanski? I think so. You know, I, I think, you know, with Stefanski, as hands off as he seems with the defense, I think you do need that kind of coach on that, that side of the ball who's just going to take total control of these guys and just kind of be that, that coach on that side of the ball. And Stefanski will handle the offense. So I, I think that kind of coach would be a really good fit for these guys. And I think it kind of, you know, with these guys, you know, we saw the lack of discipline that they had, you know, a lot during this season, the inconsistency. So a coach like that, getting these guys in gear, getting them all going in the right direction. And, uh, you know, uh, focusing on the fundamentals, I think, is the kind of coach you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Great. Tim, man, right. awesome Appreciate job you, this year. Appreciate you, man. Uh, we expect you to be yeah. about uh, three pounds lighter, but with uh, with more muscle next uh, next fall when you join us for the 2023 yeah. season. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll work on that. Okay, there you go. Thanks, Tim. Tim.